Good evening. I hope you all had a fantastic day. The market again ignored the serious civil unrest that's present across all major U.S. cities and decided to focus on the potential reopening of the economy from the coronavirus pandemic. The S&P 500 rallied 0.82% today, with the Dow being up a larger 1.05%, and finally, the Nasdaq ended the day up 0.59%. The majority of these gains came in the final hour of trading and put the S&P 500 up 40% from March lows. Stocks tied to the reopening of states outperformed once again. Citigroup, Wells Fargo, and Bank of America all rose at least 0.9%. Gap climbed 7.7%. Southwest gained 2.6%. Oil added nearly 4%. Treasury yields were higher with the 10-year treasuries ending up 2 basis points to 0.68%. Reuters reported, citing sources, state-owned Chinese companies bought at least 3 cargoes of U.S. soybeans. The news helped lift market sentiment. Today, a St. Louis Federal Reserve economist said that he believes that getting the U.S. economy back to strong growth could require negative interest rates. The key, he said, is using aggressive stimulus even beyond what authorities deployed during the financial crisis, and that could include taking interest rates below zero. He even compared the response to two major U.S. economic downturns, the Great Depression and the financial crisis. He found that the use of aggressive fiscal response through President Franklin Roosevelt's New Deal helped generate a V-shaped recovery after the Depression, while primarily monetary responses like low interest rates and Fed asset purchases during the financial crisis produced an L-shaped recovery, in which GDP failed to reach potential. But Powell and his colleagues also have expressed strong doubts about whether negative interest rates would ever be used in the United States, as they have in Europe and Japan. They cite little evidence that below zero yields are effective, and Powell pointed out in a discussion last week that they tend to be detrimental to banks. Oil jumped on Tuesday as easing lockdown measures as well as an upcoming meeting from OPEC and its oil-producing allies supported prices. West Texas Intermediate, the U.S. benchmark, gained 3.87%, or $1.37, to settle at $36.81 per barrel. Earlier in the session, it hit a high of $36.89, a level not seen since March 6th. International benchmark Brent crude settled 3.26% higher at $39.57 per barrel, also the highest since March. The move higher comes amid reports that OPEC is considering extending its production cuts of 9.7 million barrels per day when they meet this month, rather than tapering cuts beginning July 1st which the group initially agreed to at its April meeting. This caused the popular WTI oil ETF, USO, to gain 3.24% in trading today, being up $10 from March lows. Getting into sector performance, we see that on average, all sectors performed very well. However, none better than oil and gas, which finished up more than 2.8%. Basic materials and industrials, two better down industries, also posted nice days. Our table shows the great day by mid-cap value, but it is clear that it was a great day for everyone. The largest gainer today was Western Union, who we mentioned yesterday. Today, they were up 11.3% after a report came out yesterday stating that they recently made an offer to purchase fellow money transferring company MoneyGram International. Next up is familiar DXC Technology, which was the largest loser in the S&P 500 last Friday, being down more than 14%. However, Today was a different story, as they posted a gain of nearly 9.5%. No news seemed to incite the gain reflected in that DXC technology stock. However, yesterday, BMO Capital cut their price target to $16. They said, quote, DXC had another challenging quarter, with declining bookings, EPS, and free cash flow. Much like the rest of our IT services companies, DXC withdrew guidance for the upcoming fiscal year. We believe management is taking the right steps to reinvigorate internal culture and win back client trust, but we believe a turnaround is challenging in the economic backdrop. Further, we think reporting quality remains weak. We don't think the potential of a transition has become any clearer. Also, Bernstein Leibhard, a nationally acclaimed investor rights law firm, is investigating potential securities fraud claims on behalf of shareholders of DXC Technology Company resulting from allegations that DXC 
might have issued misleading information to the investing public. The biggest loser was Tiffany & Co., which is a popular American luxury jewelry and specialty retailer. They lost nearly 9% after it was reported that French luxury goods group LVMH's $16.2 billion takeover of Tiffany & Co. is looking less likely to go through amid a deteriorating situation in the U.S. market. LVMH's board is concerned about the COVID-19 pandemic and protests linked to the death of George Floyd at the hands of Minneapolis police, according to the report. The French company's board also voiced concerns about Tiffany's ability to cover all of its debt covenants at the end of the transaction, which was expected to be concluded mid-year. The second biggest loser was all-too-familiar Cotty Inc., which is a beauty brand that owns the Kylie Jenner makeup brand. Today, they moved down 4.56% after J.P. Morgan maintained their neutral rating of the stock, saying that execution risk remains due to the pandemic. Getting into earnings, we start off with Zoom, ticker symbol ZM, the video conferencing app that all of us are all too familiar with. They fell 1.73% after the reported earnings today. Zoom beat on non-GAAP EPS estimates by $0.10. Cents coming in with $0.20. Cents. They also be on revenue by $124.64 million, coming in with $328.17 million, which represents growth of 169% year-over-year. Net income was up nearly $50 million in the year-over-year quarter. For the second quarter, it's guiding to revenue of $495 million to $500 million, well above the consensus for $224.4 million and they are guiding for EPS of $0.44 cents to $0.46 cents versus the consensus estimate of $0.11. Cents. Next up is Dick's Sporting Goods, ticker symbol DKS, which is a popular sports retailer. They reported dismal earnings. Regardless, the stock still had a nice day, gaining nearly 3.7%. They reported a loss of $1.71 per share, missing estimates by $1.17. Revenue declined 30.7% year-over-year, but beat estimates by $30 million, as they reported revenue of $1.33 billion. Same-store sales declined nearly 30%. Ambarella, ticker symbol AMBA, which is a fabulous semiconductor design company focusing on low-power, high-definition, and ultra-HD video compression, image processing, and computer vision processors. Ambarella surged 6.5% today, but fell 3.5% after reporting earnings. They reported on non-GAAP EPS beat of $0.05, cents, reporting an EPS of $0.04. Cents. Revenue also beat estimates by $0.28 million, coming in with $54.6 million, and representing revenue growth of 15.7% year-over-year. The stock fell after Ambarella reported weaker-than-expected guidance for next quarter's earnings. Lastly, we have CrowdStrike ticker symbol CRWD. Shares of the cybersecurity company climbed 5% in extended trading after CrowdStrike provided its financial results for the first quarter. CrowdStrike reported a double beat, beating EPS estimates by $0.08, cents, coming in with positive EPS of $0.02. Cents. Revenue grew in an astonishing 85.4% year-over-year, beating estimates by $12.71 million and coming in at $178.1 million. Operating income swung to a gain of $1.2 million versus a year-ago loss of $21.9 million, and non-GAAP net income swung to a gain of $4.5 million from a year-ago loss of $22.1 million. On top of this, they raised guidance for all of fiscal 2021. That is all I have for today. I appreciate your time. I wish you a nice evening, and I will see you again tomorrow.